up YouTube? Welcome back to another Shed Talk. I know it's been like 300 years, so if y'all forgot what Shed Talk stands for, shit happens every day. This is uh, pretty much what we're about to be talking about today, is just the shit that we do every single fucking day. Um, for example, music. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty much, that's the topic of today. Today is music. Just like where we started. Um, where we are, our future goals, like what we want to happen from it, like just a lot of things. I don't know. I don't know what's about what we're about to get into because we just be talking. But um, yeah, so let's get started. This is um, a video that <laughs> it's been a long time coming. We haven't done shit, or I haven't done shit in a while. I've been just focused on music. So I'm gonna let you talk for a second. <laughs> Like a person that needs no introduction on this page, but Stormy J, STYJ, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, share talk. Um, uh, well, music, so I guess we could start here with music where we started. I'm gonna go where I started, and then we're gonna go okay. where yeah. you started. But like with music. I started, it all started with me and my, my brother and my dad, you know what I'm saying, like a long time ago, at a unknown age, you know what I'm saying, we would just be freestyling against each other, like, on some dumb shit, like, literally just beefing, just freestyling, and, like, saying some stupid shit, corny little jokes and that stuff, we was, like, probably, like, eight, nine, ten type shit, mm. and then, like, you know, as the years go by, you get better, you get better, whatever, whatever, and then one day, you know what I'm saying, Met a friend, we started writing songs one day, and, and like, I'm skipping over a lot of shit, but like, the beginning of it, yeah, that's how I started, we was freestyling, that's like me rapping, but before that, like, what got me into making music was, I found like some little website on the internet, I'll probably look it up someday to bring it up, but it was some website, we was making beats, me and my brother was learning how to make beats and shit. And I was probably like when I was like 13, 14, I was making beats. And then after making beats, I started writing songs and got into the studio. You know what I'm saying? My brother took me to the first session, my first ever session at the studio. It was me, my brother, Jaden, and this one nigga. I ain't gonna say his name, but this one nigga. I wrote his fucking song. <laughs> and we made three songs that day. I only have one. We made three songs that day. The first song, I rapped. He deleted that shit at the studio. My first song I ever made, he deleted that shit because I rapped it with him. He freestyled his shit. I wrote mine and rapped it. He deleted my whole verse. <laughs> so we did another one. I have a feeling I know exactly what you're talking about. Exactly. <laughs> we did I'm another talking. one. We both freestyle. He deleted my shit again, bro. <laughs> so then, so then, uh, me, my brother, and a nigga got all on one fucking song, and you know what I'm saying. Ever since then, that was kind of like the draw to keep going. Like once I seen like how competitive it could be, and then how creative you could be. You know what I'm saying it just kept me. It's, it sparked a fire that literally never stopped with creating it. I've always loved music, but like creating music really started there. Right? Uh, I would have been something. I mean, I was so, I still had the verse. <laughs> it, he ain't delete my verse. He just no, yeah, no, deleted just the song. song. So I was like, yeah. I was like, all right, that. You know what I'm saying? Cause I had wrapped the verse on like probably like twenty different beats before we did it in the studio that day. That's why I was so. That's why everybody in the studio, literally, everybody in the studio was thrown off. Cause it was like, except for my brother. Cause it was like, dang, you're really good at rapping. Like, how'd you do that? I'm like. Little did they know, I had wrote that shit probably like two months ago, and I was probably practicing that shit like every fucking day until I decided to record that shit or rap it for somebody, you know what I'm saying? And that's just how it was. But that's how it all started. And then, um, after that, 16, my sweet 16, my mama paid for a four hour studio session. I took all my friends, every single one of my friends that rapped or had some some type of support or wanted to do music, we all went to the studio for a four hour studio session and we all just rapping and shit. And then every weekend, since that weekend, on my 16th birthday, I went to the studio every fucking weekend for a year and a half. 
and my engineer got the receipts. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, you did you did say that. He said, uh, so he paid for his own studio session every single week at sixteen, right? Yeah, since I was sixteen. But that's, I ain't gonna that's impressive. Like, I ain't gonna say for people that know studio prices and things like that. Yeah, I ain't gonna say uh so the prices at the time was like thirty five an hour. But you, if you get a four hour session, you can pay one twenty. So I usually would try to get the one the uh four hour session for one twenty. And I wouldn't say I paid the whole thing by myself, but like I always had like we always had the funds to get in the studio that, like, every like the fucking drive weekend. Today, and drive in the you know what I'm saying? No, so, the like, drive in general to continue doing these like Yeah, there's a lot of people. It's hard. But yeah, like we would go half like I'm trying to in the beginning it'd be like a group of us we'll all go half on a four hour session and make a song and make songs together. And then after a while like you start to make, you want to make your own songs. Like, I don't want to always keep rapping right. with y'all. So you have to make like $70, but at 16, you're going to high school or whatever, whatever, your own situations. You still got to make that shit happen. <laughs> Until I got a job and I bought all my own studio shit. You know what I'm saying? I just didn't have Pro Tools at the time in the IFL. Um, and my engineer, Dilo, my only engineer, he taught me how to use Pro Tools. And then I started working at the studio. And that's how I became an engineer. Learning how to make my own music. And then my engineer teaching me a different software. Like Pro Tools. I learned how to make music on FL. But I also learned how to make music at the same time learning Pro Tools. I was learning the same thing at the same time. Just two different softwares. And I was able to sell my... Uh, I was able to like uh, monetize my time using Pro Tools in the studio. Like I just charged people to come record at the studio and I will only mix on Pro Tools but when I go home and mix my own shit it'd be all on FL but no one can tell the difference for probably like two three years they always be like are oh, you doing all this shit on Pro Tools like hell no like, my best songs I mix was probably on FL when Pro Tools was like hot you know what I'm saying it's just, a, it's just you just gotta have that ear bro. every song I sound like yeah and like the ear develops I like for me I've definitely learned that like over time you're uh, ear develops and like the more practice and like more songs that you create you just are able to hear it differently really you're able to like hear all the different sounds and just I don't know be able to mix them a lot better because my mixes when I first started making music was like way way more different than what I'm making now and I don't know. yeah I don't know. <laughs> so uh, so yeah Learn how to use Pro Tools, worked out the studio for probably like a year and a half. That was like when COVID hit. 2020, 2019 into 2020. I was working out the studio and then I go home and put my own shit at home on FL and I was with working with that's when the weather channel came about also. I was with Jaden D Palm and another person, a producer, you know what I'm saying? He might come back later in the story. But um we all worked on the, my first album together, which was Project V. All four of us did that shit together. Dan and documented it. Um, Deepalm engineered a lot of shit. I was teaching him how to engineer on FL, so he was engineering a lot of my shit. Like half of the album. And HBK produced the entire, HBK Cheese produced the entire album except for the last song, which was Moon Dancing. And that was. Pretty much like when I decided and realized like music is the easiest shit for me to do. Like I feel like I was put on earth to create shit and I'm an artist of all mediums and I was thinking about this earlier, I was going to tell you this. Like I'm an artist of all mediums and I feel like music is just another medium of art. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just like paint, there's different Mediums of painting, you know what I'm saying? You got oil paint, acrylic paint, water paint, blah 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 blah. That all falls under fucking art and certain mediums of art. The music is a medium of art. Auditory. So I just feel like it was just such a. I was so like quick to learn it and then fluent at it doing it. It was just kind of like, you know what I'm saying? This is what I gotta do. This is what I wanna do too. So. Once I got that situated, I went to college for digital arts and design. 
I brought all my studio shit with me. I was recording every fucking day. I didn't drop music for probably like a year and a half. But I fell out with a lot of my friends and whatever. But I just started making music to myself. Picked up producing again after three years of not producing. I picked up producing again in Orlando. And was working in the studio out there, all train studios. So. And we was just I've been doing a lot of shows towards the end of my time in Florida. I did a lot of shows with King Dez and shit. And I swear, you know, doing my way for performing on stage or whatever. But once I came back home, it was kind of like, all right, we got to do something bigger and do something better. So that's kind of how I started and where I'm at now. I came back. I was working at the same studio. I was getting interviewed at a lot of other studios. Speaking of it, get an interview from a lot of studios. I was trying to build my own studio, and then um, I went to Alaska. I was like, fuck it, I just went to Alaska. And now I'm back, trying to build another studio. Alright, so, my turn for where I started. Okay, pretty much. So where I started in music, I was recording a music video for Kayla. What is SB? SB Bank. Uh, yeah, SB Bank. Shout out, yeah. Make some more music, dude. Gee, <laughs> Kayla, you playing <laughs> Make some fucking man. music. Congratulations but, um, to the Ray just got married. Oh, for real? Congratulations to you and your wife. That's awesome. I hope you guys are having fun instead of doing some cool things together. Traveling and all that good things. But alright, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> that's that's awesome actually. It's cool to see people that I know from school get married and stuff already. Love's a beautiful thing. Beautiful thing. Shot the video. <laughs> Yeah, so sh shot the video for Caleb, um, went to the studio to shoot a scene, and when we got to the studio, he was the engineer, so that was a big surprise, I, I remember Jay just, because I hadn't seen him in like two years, because I graduated, because we played soccer together, and we did video productions together in high school, and that's where we met, um, and so from like... From that, from that year after the video productions year, um, I don't, know, I don't think we played. Oh, he played. We didn't play on the same soccer team. We played on the same team, but you were the varsity. Yeah, that, that was, was the difference. Um, <laughs> so we practiced together, scrimmage against each other. But we never. Yeah, we I think play we played on the together. same field probably like once or twice. Yeah, and so we we were talking soccer and stuff like that, and then um, and then I graduated and went to college and. Was doing computer engineering, yada yada yada. Decided I didn't want to do that. Decided I want to be an artist. <laughs> yeah, I think you guys have heard about that before. But um, and so yeah, at the studio, he's the engineer. Big surprise. He gets up, give you dab each other up, hug each other, and shit. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh, uh, it's been two years. Uh, yada yada. What you been on? And um. So we just start chatting up. And it's like, I actually am starting to do music videos and I started doing YouTube by myself and um, different things like that. And he's like, oh, no, no shit. Like, I'm actually, I, th I don't, I don't really know what the entire process, how we got to Project B entirely. But I, I do know the next three weeks after that, we started making music like regularly. It was really, or I didn't start making music yet, but I was at the studio with them regularly for the next three weeks, for sure. And, um, then I don't remember exactly which week it was, but Jeremiah kept trying to like, he was just like, Jamie, try to make a song just because it's like, just because you're here, why not? Like, you And I, I low key always wanted to try making music. Um, like my brother told me, like when I was a little kid, I used to write songs. And it didn't sound very good. But like, <laughs> uh, like I always had like a drive for that. Like I really wanted to make it. I don't know why. I just always thought, I was like, man. Try and make a song, and just like seeing like how it was actually done in front of me, and like, cause I had such a skewed vision of like how music was made. I was like, I thought you had to be like some super professional person, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it turns out fucking anybody fucking makes music. So anybody and everybody makes music now, <laughs> literally. But um, 
so yeah, I, I like it just kind of blew my mind that experience, and so I just um, I eventually got the courage to really tr uh, do the stuff in the studio. I wrote all my shit out, um, wrote a song out and stuff, and we did like a few different songs. We made a tape. I heard Jay made a tape. It was uh, Stormy and Friends. Yeah, Stormy and Friends. Um, I don't think it's out anymore, sadly. <laughs> it's private. Hit me up for the link. But, uh, yeah, lucky I'm going to have to hit him up for the link. Like had my uh, But yeah, so, Stormy and Friends, we did a whole bunch of, that was our first stuff. And that was low-key, like, that was a different energy of music. Like, that was, like, we were just so excited to be doing stuff. Like, Jay was doing, like, a bunch of different crazy shit. He would literally just go in the booth. He'd be like, watch this, guys. I'm about to do, I'm about to try something. And then go on the booth with the keyboard and the uh, fucking mouse on the little TV in there that's like blurry and shit. And would just like actually just sit. He would go in there for like fucking 45 minutes. And we would just be out there talking. We can hear everything that's going on. But Jay's just in there by himself. He's just doing, doing the bars, doing the bars. And like that was when he was really fucking doing songs like... Shit like, eh, like he, I don't even fucking know how to explain it. Like it was just like he would do like two different J's all like in his music constantly. That, I think that's really, really where he developed, in my opinion, the Stormy and S T R type difference in music. And so, um, yeah. So we're in the yeah, studio I'm making a bunch of songs. I think we made, low key, we made like a good amount of songs. I think on Stormy, Actually, what I was gonna say. I don't want to put you on, but what I was going to say was, I think Project V came out before Stormy and Friends, but we, I had Stormy, I, we was working on Stormy and Friends like, for probably like a year and a half. I had all those songs, all of those songs was literally just my favorite songs I made with all my friends in the studio while working there. Mm -hmm. So, and Jaden's on... I caught on late to Project V. I was late to it. I was the, the documentary later. Yeah. I Jayden think they were already talking about it. Well, Project V was like, Project V was, we already had like two or three songs that we already had made, me and Cheese, and we was working on a lot of shit, like, probably like every fucking day in the summer, and then once we realized, we like, we got a lot of songs, like, we'll maybe take a couple of the songs and then build a project out of the songs, and then we produce Project V, and towards the end, like, that's when we only had like six or seven more songs to do. And that's when I started bringing Jaden around. I was like, I'll oh, just come record this shit. Like, come record what we doing. Like, just just video it. And that's when Jaden was there. But he didn't really start making music. He wasn't making music yeah, wasn't. with us on when we was doing Project V. But he started making music. He made music every time we was in the studio. Yeah, in the studio, I'd be, uh, like, after a certain amount of time, I would just try and make stuff with him. And it came to a point where I was, like, already starting to write stuff at my house before I even went over there. Because I'll be like, Jay, I got this verse the other day that I already wrote. And, um, actually, let me check the camera and make sure it's still recording. Yep, okay. So, um, yes, okay. So after the studio, then. Oh, let me, let then me sign Jay out real quick. Okay. Project V, um, I was going to say another thing I don't mention. We did not record Project V in a studio at all. Like my first album was yeah. not recorded in the studio. Was, that uh, bitch was in. I'm sorry. Sorry, apartment. That bitch was in a goddamn hotel in the back of a fucking apartment. Like we was on some like you know what I'm saying like niggas was just in a situation. And we just was literally just was like this the only thing that kept all of us. And there's a lot of different art, like, artists on Project V. On a G. No, it's only me. No. It's just me. Uh, there's was that, one, there's this one dude that came it's only Tay. that one day. It's only Tay. Tay's the only uh, Tay Punched Money. In. Tay Money, he the only yeah. one on the uh, Project V. But uh, oh. yeah, we was in a we was in a stupid, we was in a crazy situation, and it wasn't nobody fault. That's just what it was. And we was in that bitch making music every day. That shit was I would never it was like, the grind. You know I'm saying I don't regret any day. I, don't, I ain't never like. You know what I'm saying? Like, that shit was fun to me. That was a part of life. That was a part that I loved. It really was fun. Like, we was in that bitch doing that shit. But yeah, the only song on Project V recorded in the studio on Pro Tools was the last song. Like, I just threw that bitch on there because it was just a vibe. Yeah, it was just like a little outro vibe. Yeah, Jaden didn't make music. 
outside of the studio. Like you have to, I have to really like pressure his ass. It wasn't even really pressuring because you you could see like he a freestyle with us and shit. One thing he won't say he he forgot to mention is we'll freestyle for probably like an hour. Like all the people here, I invite him to a session. It'd be like eight people. And they all going in on like an eight hour session. And the whole first two hours, I'll be like, all right, let's start the song, let's start working. Then they wanna be like, nah, let's freestyle with you, bro. They be like, nah, Jay, we, we wanna freestyle with you, bro. We wanna smoke with you for like two, three hours before we even start. I'm like, damn. Every single time. And, I, and like, as an engineer, as a businessman, I'm like, Look, y'all paying for this time, y'all should be creating shit, but I mean, as the vibe, like, you know what I'm saying, I got, as I got to know them more, they was like, nah, like, we just had a great time, like, we were freestyle with you for, like, two, three hours, we'll go get some food, and then make, like, two, we'll make, like, two or three songs, and they'll be really good, really engineered songs, really thought through songs with a good vibe, good energy, and then lead a studio, like, fucking happy about it, you know what I'm saying, even if, even if they missed the line here or want to redo some shit here, they like, I had a great time at the fucking studio. I feel really good about this song. Um, you know what I'm saying? Most and of the like time, the people that they would song. bring too, like they'll be able to enjoy themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like, and by the end of the night, everyone's always just like, like uh, exhausted. It's exhausted. like you just like, like we really on. just used your whole fucking brain energy. But this is giving me anxiety. I'm about to re-record yeah. this because I don't know. All right. Alright, I just wanted to make sure we didn't lose any you know, footage. Alright, keep talking. I'm not okay, so. Um, Tell them what's the, what yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so. After the studio, Jer or, STY uh, moved to Florida. And so for like six months or some shit, I couldn't make any music outside. <laughs> I was writing a lot of music and I was drawing. And like, I spent hours upon hours upon hours in my fucking room just staring, <laughs> staring at the wall. Um, just thinking about life and like a whole bunch of different shits. I, I like, I got into a really creative mindset when I was, uh, um, staying at my grandpa's, um, cause I, yeah, I was literally just like not fucking, whatever, um, not eating and shit, but whatever, I, I was just, I was on there. I, I wasn't even on the grind, I just couldn't stop thinking about art, I couldn't stop thinking about music, and that's why I wanted to do it. And so I saved up my money, finally bought, um, what did I buy? Oh, I bought all the studio equipment thanks to Jay because he helped me out by, uh, with getting all the different shit, what I needed to get, all that different stuff. Um, my mom helped me out with that stuff too. Blessings to, or blessings from her. Thank you, mom, for uh, supporting me. But, uh, <laughs> so yeah, got all the equipment eventually and then started making music. That was the very hard part because for a while I just didn't know what I was doing at all. Um, Jay was still in Florida. Uh, we would FaceTime and stuff and I would ask him some questions and whatnot, but we couldn't get in like, into like super depth about stuff. I just had to learn it on my own. And I didn't have any type of studio here, or whatever you want to call it. Um, and so like my sound would just be way off always. <laughs> and with auto tune, I didn't know how to uh, find the key, and so I would try to listen for it, and it was off every single time. And I would send him to, I would send like six songs a day to Jeremiah. He'd be like, "Bro, don't fucking send me a song unless it's a finished song." <laughs> so that's oh what I said. Songs. I really should, dude. <laughs> So, I was like, yeah, we're really gonna start <laughs> focusing on this shit. And, uh, I, st I did really start getting better. And, like, and although I didn't have the uh, sound engineering skills still, I was like, my talent for rapping and singing and different things like that was starting to get better and starting to get to my own type of sound. Uh, I mean, it really, like, it took a long time for me to just start actually having a sort of sound that, like, I would say is my own. But, like, now, uh, Jay will say, like, if you hear a song from mine, you know it's a silent song. Like, silent Jay made this song, like, usually. You can, just, uh, you can just tell, like, I don't know, my songs are just a little different. I, I try and talk about exactly how I'm feeling in that moment a lot, but I'm trying to get out of that. We were, we, we were just talking about this, like, not I, I, I. We need to start getting into the why of shit, like, why, like, uh, why am I, why did I start to make music, or, like, why am I sad? Why am I feeling this type of way? Why am I angry? Why am I whatever? 
getting into the deeper things of stuff, just not not saying it so blatantly, trying to get more creative about it, diving deeper and like getting into the real like artistry of it, like the poetry of it, the beauty of like music, like the deeper meaning, like how and like actually conveying a fucking point. Like <laughs> like uh you said like we would have um or like especially for myself but uh, with so many different topics in a song or like so many messages that's what it was so many messages in a song but we didn't start like I was saying when I, I when I listen to Bob Marley um, he uh you know the topic of the song you know what he's trying to convey from the song like you get it <laughs> um and so that's like that's what I'm trying to get more into now just like actually creating things that people can remember and people can find peace from that's that's my goal for music i really want to start getting into healing stuff and just like things that are able to help people because like i know it's like to be through some struggles mentally and shit like that and i got a lot of different family members and just people that i know that struggle with things and so um i hope like one day that i'll be able to like really people will really start to listen to what i'm what i'm saying like because I know a lot of people listen to music for, a lot of people listen for the beat, a lot of people listen just, um, just because how it sounds, like, just how it sounds, really, um, a lot, and, or, and they just know the hook, like, and that's about it, like, they don't really, um, they don't care too much, like, not everyone, a lot, like, don't get me wrong, there's plenty of people that are very deep into music and things like that, I'm not discrediting anybody, but, my music for myself, it, I would say, is not for everybody. It's a particular taste, um, and yeah. But so I, I started making music regularly. I literally for the past three years. All right. Is it recording? Yes, it's recording. Second section of the podcast of Shad Talk. They gonna call this bitch. I don't even know. Fuck. But, um, we're gonna go back to back. We'll talk about something. So, this this episode was music theme, right? So, let's say, what do you feel about, like, the current status of music, like, the current situation? In your perspective, like, how is, I wouldn't say just the rap game, but how is, like, So, I think the whole um, super hype, like, over-sexualized killing type shit will end up probably fading eventually, and then we'll start getting into more of a serious type of note. I just don't know how, or, like, what that sound is. Um, I still think it's gonna be like the same, like, it's still gonna be upbeat type stuff and like the, like, similar sounds to what we're hearing now. It's just gonna be more. Um, I think like, eventually the artists that, I, uh, what, what does it say? Like, real music lasts, so like, the people that are making stuff about real shit and stuff that like, can help others and helps themselves and things like that. And like, not only just helping things, but like, just songs that are real, like, just, like, how you actually were feeling in that moment, like, you just, uh, I was listening to one, or we were listening to one of his songs, and we were just talking about it, like, that he was just like, yeah, because it was just some real shit, it was like a story, like, some actually, that actually happened, and things like that, like, I think those are what is going to be music, at least, at least that's what I'm looking for, for music, in the future, I'm looking for the real shit, things that inspire me, like, make me want to uh, dive deeper into myself and like really the good I, I miss goosebump music like shit that you hear that like give me goosebumps because it's just like it hits so deep like, I think the future of music is going to be very weird let me check it out so I didn't mean to cut off but yeah what happened is the camera stopped recording I'm sad but, um, I think the future of music is going to be so fucking weird. Um, I feel like this younger generation and my generation, the unheard generation, it's going to be 
the future of music. Like, I'm talking about like the. I ain't even gonna name no names to my. They wouldn't name my name, so I ain't name them names. But, <laughs> uh, the future, the, the unheard, the underground, the. Uh, the you know what I'm saying? The underdogs. I feel like that's gonna be the future of music. And then, like you said, the real music gonna last too. But, um, I feel like social, as, as social media develops, you know what I'm saying, and people become, you know, and people's lives, real life become more transparent online, you know what I'm saying, everybody gonna start to see who everybody truly is, you can't really, that mask that you wear outside in the real world, you probably gonna have to start wearing that shit online, and I think that's where music is headed to, like, you can kind of pick out who, 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 who really about what they say they is and who really not, just by the tone of their voice, just by the way they set a bar, or just by the way they present themselves. Like, you can just tell. So, I feel like that's where music is headed. I feel like that's where society is headed. You're going to have to really fake it, or you're going to have to be who the fuck you are, bro. Like, it's it's kind of like, I don't know, like natural selection or some shit. That's why. That's how I want music to go. <laughs> what that's is that social Darwinism? Darwinism? I think so. Like that's how I want music to go too. Like I want it to be like I don't need the people who truly love or truly can create a good fucking song to keep doing this shit. Cause it's a lot of ass niggas, bro, and it's a lot of like nonsensical people and people just just doing it for a bag. It's like, alright, bro, we didn't seen that shit done a million times. Like rap been around for. How many years? Like, you know what I'm saying, we done seen rappers rap and live their entire careers and die of natural selection. We done seen artists sing and perform their entire lives and die of their natural selection. So we done seen all the possibilities of how these musicians can come up, whether it's fucking performance or they die just to get some money and get out of that situation or whatever. A, B, C, D, E, F, Z. You know what I'm saying? It's a whole bunch of documentaries. And artists do what they fucking do and got to where they got so I think now it's just gonna be like alright you got here but what you're doing what what you're creating what is that doing like what is that gonna do cause we didn't see people get to where they got we see billionaires and millionaires and the most famous people in the world like let's see a song that literally stops a person from doing some crazy shit and then they go on to be a millionaire and then they speak about your song that'll make me admire you more than a nigga with a million views on a video in a week, I'd be like, okay. But he heard Lil Tommy singing Angels Don't Die or some shit, and this nigga that wrote a whole Emmy awarded movie. That's some real shit. So, um, also, something that I wanted to talk about uh, because it got cut out uh, tips. We talked about tips for music. And so, pretty much, I don't even want to just try and say what I just said. I'm gonna say a different tip. tip. Yeah, new tip. Um, still though, if you're if you're starting music, what I tell people is don't start that oh unless you God. really love it or like you have uh, a purpose for making the song. Is what uh, Jay said. Um, like, music is music for me is the way that I breathe easier. Like, so. <laughs> That's not even a fucking tip. I'm just talking. <laughs> uh, tip for y'all. Uh, go, Jay. I'm gonna think for a second. My tip is um, um, research. That'd be my best tip. Research, bro. Learn what the fuck you're doing, bro. If anything, research will take you a long way, bro. Like, looking up shit, like, asking people shit, like, calling people. Like, I call my friends. I call some friends for some things. Like, I know I probably would be the most seasoned, well-seasoned musician out of my friend group, but I still call them and ask them questions about dropping a song or mixing a song or how to stream or how to upload this or how to make this sound better. Research, research, research. Like, never stop researching, bro. Like, that's be my best tip. I mean, I started from ground zero. I would say what software I need would program and with mic and with headphones and then from there with um, and, um, and how to mix, how to compress, and how to record, how to mono, how to 
Hey, uh, da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-